to start, I have one question. Who of you has heard about CK snarks? Okay, so that's a majority. Who of you has a rough idea what they actually mean and do? Okay, so yeah, that's like, that's a good first start. So uh, my name is Jacob. I'm a PhD student here at TU Berlin in the Information Systems Engineering Department. And uh, with me today is Stefan, who will help me out with the demo because in my browser, Remix is not working as well as uh, in his browser. Um, and I'm currently working on um, a compiler that compiles from a high level language to computations. You can do a zero knowledge proof over basically and then verify that proof on the blockchain. So to give a little context, I've prepared a couple of slides. I'm not too well prepared, uh, prepared because I just found out that I'll be giving this talk uh, in, in the afternoon today. So uh, yeah, so what's, what's the basic idea? What's the basic setting we're, we're talking about? Uh, I think it's delegated computation. What we have at the moment with blockchain systems is what we see on the left side. So we usually have only on-chain processing. There's transaction being sent to the network and then it gets validated by every single node in the network. And there's several proposals to change that with, with uh, Plasma, Christian we'll talk about later, and other sharding techniques. Uh, but there's also another idea that we do no longer do all the computation on-chain, but do part of it off-chain. So uh, one proposal that did that was Trubit, for example. Um, so they, there was this, the idea of a computation marketplace and you off-chain computations and then you publish the result and in the Trubit case um, fraud can be detected and people who uh, provide results that are invalid will be punished. So that's one uh, way uh, of dealing with the problem that when you don't actually execute computation on-chain you cannot be certain that it's actually correct. And another approach of doing the same thing is that you not only do the computation off-chain, but during the computation, you create a proof, and that proof proves that the computation was done correctly. And then all you have to do is take the result on-chain and validate that the proof is valid on-chain. So instead of doing the whole computation on the blockchain, you do it off-chain and only validate that it's actually okay on-chain. And that's the setting we're, we're talking about here. Okay, so uh, Socrates, uh, we call the tool Socrates, uh, CK, so knowledge, and the idea is uh, that, you know, the famous saying from Socrates, I know that I know nothing here, it's I know that I show nothing, bit of a bad pun maybe, but the idea is that uh, when I do the computation off chain, I can use private information in that computation without ever leaking that uh, to the public, and that's a zero knowledge property of these proofs. Okay, so uh, what is Socrates? I'll give you a demo in a minute, and it's a tool. It takes a higher level language. It's not too super powerful just because it, it is limited. Um, it's not Turing complete because of the underlying abstractions needed to do CK snarks on. Um, but it's a high level language. It can be, yeah, it's, it's very understandable and, and quite simple. And then we have a compiler which transforms that in a representation you can do CK snarks with basically. So we have that high level language and then we compile these statements into a set of conditions. These set of conditions, they have a special form and they're called, one, uh, they're called a rank one constraint system. So you just have a huge list of conditions. And then um, you can transform that to a quadratic arithmetic program, which is basically equal um, to a tree with only additions and multiplications um, on the, the nodes in the tree. And from that, using the zero knowledge uh, work uh, that has been developed, you can generate a prover, a verifier, and use these to actually um, do computations and with the computations, uh, yeah, find a proof. Okay, so um, here's what the process looks like. It was on the other slide as well. We have code. We compile that to a rank one constraint system that gets compiled to a, a quadratic arithmetic program, and then uh, we generate a CK snark based on that representation. So this part is 
basically yeah, well understood, I would say, and is covered in the library libsnark, uh, which is publicly available. It's used by the Ccache network uh, as well. And this part is yeah, the, like the main contribution in the compiler that we take the high-level language and transform it to the set of conditions. And here we have a little uh, code sample at the bottom, uh, how such a program could look like. Uh, we have positive integer variables, and here we check um, some conditions depending on x and do computations based uh, on these outputs. Okay, so that's the general setting and how it looks like, and now I would like to move on to the demo, but maybe we'll have time for quick questions regarding the whole process in CK SNARKs, if that wasn't clear from my introduction what the basic idea was. So, any questions at this point, or do you first want to see the demo? Okay. Um, What's the meaning of the acronym? Which acronym? CK SNARK. Oh, uh, Zero Knowledge, Succinct Non-Interactive Argument of Knowledge. Uh, let me take the well, very helpful question. Thank you. Uh, so uh, yeah, these uh, these proofs they have several properties, and the first uh, proofs that were able to verify or uh, yeah prove that computations were correct were interactive proofs that meant between the verifier and the prover several rounds of com communication were necessary to actually uh, uh, reach a certain level of uh, yeah certainty that the, the computation was actually correct. And these CK SNARK constructions, they don't have that interactivity prop uh, property, so they're non-interactive, and that's part of the name uh, with non-interactive. The succinctness property just means the proofs are short, um, so that means they're cheap to send around the network, they can be received, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a short format. And the certain knowledge property is also a nice property, uh, it, and it basically comes for free in the construction. Um, that means when I do my computation off-chain, I can use data that will later be um, publicly visible, but I can also use private data, for example, whatever, my, my ID or something, use it in the computation to arrive at an outcome, and that outcome can then be validated or verified without me leaking the private information. So I keep my private information to myself and can still prove that I have that private information. Okay, so one example, a good example maybe is um, I have an ID and there is a hash of my ID on the blockchain. And now I can prove that I have that idea, ID by hashing it off chain and providing a certain knowledge proof that I have the value, that means the idea that hashes to the value stored on chain without ever re uh, revealing my ID information. So I keep the, the sensitive information completely to myself and can still make statements about it and verify these statements. So that's the CK part of CK SNARKs. Okay. So I have a question. Is yeah. it like uh, the combination of uh, like whatever uh, I want to make and the verification, they have similar amount of work? I know the, the, the computation uh, requires much more amount of work. The, the verification is very cheap and that's a cool property because we use that um, here and we do the verification directly in Solidity, that means in the EVM. And if that part was expensive, that would not be possible. So um, it's just several elliptic curve operations, couple of pairings, additions, scalar multiplications. Um, and, and actual multiplications, but it's, it's, it's a couple of operations. It's cheap to do. I think at the moment it's about half, half the gas limit it takes to do one verification, so, right? Yeah, I think around about that. So it's, it's still expensive, but compared to the work you have to do off-chain to generate the proof, it's cheap and it's actually, actually doable today on, on the Ethereum blockchain. Yes? What are you optimizing? Capacity, okay, so is there a goal? Uh, the, yeah, so one goal is privacy. That was in the example I gave you that I can, you know, uh, prove things on information that I do not reveal. And we don't have that at the moment. You need to make all the information public 
and the blockchain will then you know, do computations and I derive results. Another thing I don't see it at the moment because the proof generation is still quite expensive, but what you can also do, um, the special property of these CK snarks is that the verification is independent, uh, the complexity of the verification is independent of the complexity of the computation you're proving. So that means no matter how complex your off-chain operations are, the proof always costs you the same. So at some point, there's a break-even point where doing a very complex computation off-chain and doing it on-chain, uh, where the off-chain part becomes much cheaper than doing the same computation on-chain. And you can do operations that would uh, exceed the gas limit that's uh, uh, of a block and still verify it on-chain, so you also enhance capabilities of the blockchain. Yes? Does verification depend on the amount of data? Amount of, it depends on the number of inputs, but it does not depend on the length or complexity of the computation whatsoever. Okay, and what kind of operations can, can I do on the Okay, you'll see that in the demo. It's, it's not too powerful, but you can do some things. I'm currently still implementing a hash function. It should be possible. It's just not done yet, so that would be very nice to have in the future. Um, at the moment, you can just do um, condition checking, loops, function calls, and um, arithmetic operations on field elements um, for people. It's the, the variables we use, they are elements of prime fields, but it's easier to just imagine them as positive integers. So that works for, for most operations unless there's overflows, but I can't cover it in that detail. Um, okay, let me show you something. Oh, I'm in the wrong console. Okay, so uh, what I have here is, uh, I'll just show you the file, I'll go to the examples directory and show you a very simple program, which is a simple add. That's what it looks like. You have a main function, takes two parameters, and it returns the sum of both. Okay, so that's a very basic example. You can do much more complex, but I'll just show you uh, what you can do with that. And um, the tool provides a command line interface um, that allows you to compile such code to compute witnesses. That means to derive solutions for the constraint system and with that um, derive solutions for the program in the first place. You can then export the verification code to Solidity smart contract so you can actually verify your computation you specified on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, and what the serenodus proofs require at the moment is a trusted setup phase. Um, okay, but there's uh, ways around that. Uh, there's several yeah, efforts in the community, especially by the Zcash people, to find a way around that, so I won't uh, cover this now. So basically what you can do, you specify your program, you compile it in a set of conditions, you find a solution with that tool for your conditions, and then um, you can compute a proof, and also you can uh, compute a Solidity source code that you publish to the network, and with that source code you can verify the computations on-chain and solutions of uh, your, your constraint system. So um, let me compile this code. Okay, that's what the compile program looks like. It looks exactly the same because all these conditions are already in right format. I can show you a more uh, complex code sample. For example, um, and choose K. So this program uh, computes n choose k, the binomial coefficient, and after compiling that, um, n choose k takes a while. Takes a long while now, longer than usually does. Oh yeah, here it is. So you, you can see 
it's just tons and tons of conditions. So yeah, our simple example works for now, but usually it's, it's huge constraints that, that, the sets that come from simple programs already. Okay, and what I can then do, um, I'll first compile the app example again, and then I will compute um, a witness, that means a solution for the program, and also um, a Solidity smart contract, which I can use to verify uh, that computation on-chain. Um, I do that using the shortcut operation, which does setup, witness computation, and uh, Solidity code export in one step. I provide two arguments, let's say one and one. I want to calculate the sum of A and B. I do that, and what I get, let's go up. Okay, first I get a witness, that means I get a satisfying set of variables that satisfy my program, so that means um, A is one and B is one. I gave that to the, to the compiler, and the output is two, so it computed that simple sum correctly, but what it also did is it uh, generated a verification key in Solidity compliant format. I can use that, paste it in the template, and deploy that to the network, and then I can uh, verify proofs with that um, that I can also generate with this tool. And down here, we also have a proof which I can then use to validate stuff from Solidity. Uh, actually, today we validated the first proof on the Robston testnet, and uh, Stefan will briefly yeah, show us this process because it works better on his machine. Okay, so um, the computation, what we validate on chain now is that one plus one is two. <laughs> but it could be an arbitrarily complex like, computation and the uh, verification so would always look the same. You mean like we post the inputs, like one, one, we post the output two, mm -hmm. and we post a bunch of data which like shows that the, this Exactly. At this point, we don't use private data. What we could also have is um, that we say, or that we prove that we have two numbers, the sum of which equals two, and then we would only provide the two and the proof, and still we would be sure that the person who generates a valid proof was in possession of two numbers, for example, one and one, that um, satisfy the constraint system. Yes? Pardon? What is it that you send to, in the scenario that I have this one plus one? Yeah, you send the inputs, that means in that case one, one, and two. And then you send, yeah, a proof, and that's a set, a couple of elliptic curve points, essentially, that are then used to check conditions on, and they, uh, what they, what they show, what the, what the validation logic, or verification logic checks, is that you actually used the correct, um, code basically the correct program and you did not just use another program to compute the result. In the, in the Solidity example though, say, so at the very beginning you, you run this compiler and then it deploys, or it gives you a Solidity um, line code, you deploy that as a contract and that contract is your validator. Exactly. Uh, and also the proof for that the answer is correct and that they have actually used the correct program code to generate that answer. So you can't lie about the, the source code you use to arrive at that answer. And how much gas did you say that cost? It's at, at the moment half the gas limit, so <coughs> a lot. It 1.9 million for one verification. Okay. And is it going to change depending on verification, or is that sort of like a... That's, like a that's fixed because you always do the same... Um, verification steps, no matter how complex your off-chain computation is, it only depends slightly on the number of input variables, so the gas cost actually grows a bit with the number of input variables um, you have, but 
generally, uh, the, the, the large part of the gas cost remains constant. Is there something planned to reduce the gas cost in the future? Uh, well, someone would have to arrive at better CK snarks or would make to have, uh, would have to make the, the verification operations cheaper so it, or more efficient on hardware so that uh, the Ethereum Foundation could reduce the, the gas cost for these operations. But what it is, it's elliptic curve operations and they are costly and um, there are several required. So I think either you have new CK snarks that allow you to do less costly operations um, or you have to like yeah become more efficient but I don't see that at so the moment. Practically I can only use this in some edge cases for sort of going to core on blockchain on chain. Because of this high gas cost. You but you could have computations off chain that you couldn't even fit in a block. So in that case it would actually save gas, yeah. So it depends on use case and also of course there's the price for privacy, but at the moment you don't have privacy. So you cannot make statements about your private data and you can do that of course at the moment it's expensive but it's a it's a thing you can't do without it okay now uh, let's continue with the demo okay so we deployed that contract uh, to the Robson testnet maybe you should can show the source code so that's what um, the solidity uh, verification code looks like there's also some unnecessary testing code in there because we just stole that from Christian and then uh, made some modifications. Maybe, yeah. And the, the verified exclusion. Yeah, so that's the function you call when you want to uh, provide a proof and have uh, the proof verified. So you call verify a transaction and then you provide a number of um, elliptic curve points. These are the A and AP and they're, they're always two um, uh, yeah, large numbers basically that make up one point. In the case of the one group we're using and in the case of the other group it's even four points but it doesn't really matter. You provide a number of points and then you provide um, input variables, these are the parameters we gave to the compiler, so in our case 112, and um, then the conditions are checked on chain. Okay, now we want to actually um, do, do the transaction now and, and check whether um, 1 plus 1 is actually 2. Uh, what I didn't mention yet, the CK snarks, they're probabilistic proofs, so we can only prove with a very high certainty that 1 plus 1 is 2. We can't be 100% sure. I mean, we're using a blockchain that we can't be 100% sure anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone could find a hash complaint. <laughs> with very low probability. All right, here you see, um, that's the, the parameters here. So these are these elliptic curve points that come out of the CK snark stuff that we just need uh, to make sure that the correct program was used and that nobody cheated with, uh, with the, uh, the program. And here are our input parameters at the very end. And that's our input we now take and uh, pass to the solidity um, verify transaction function. We do that from Remix here and then use MetaMask to um, send it to the Robson to the Robson node. It's working. It's pending. Yeah, it's pending. It, it takes a while, but now, yeah, ask us for confirmation. Okay, so guess. And then hopefully we can see the ether scan after it has been mined in a minute, and we can actually see whether the validation has succeeded or failed. Yeah, so wait until next week until you use it on the mainnet. <laughs> okay. 
No, I also have to say that at the moment it's an early prototype. It's not secure, not well tested. We're just showing you first results and I would not use it for any production use cases at the moment. Definitely not. That's okay, and here you can see we actually have a, a, a transaction and it triggered an event and it uh, said that the transaction successfully verified and because we had the inputs one, one and two, we now know that it's most likely, uh, one and one is most likely two. Um, so that's, that's it with our short demo. Uh, I think it was a lot. It, I could not cover the low level details because they're actually quite complex. Um, but now we're, we're open to any questions. So 1.7 million gas used. Yeah, quite some gas used. Um, it's it's pre-compiled contracts, so essentially it's it's not really machine codes, but like machine codes, it's things you cannot do in the EVM that or it, they would be too costly to do in the EVM that now have an um, direct implementation, and these operations can be called from EVM. So you can think of it as if it was a new opcode added to the EVM, and that can do pairing operations. Uh, that's a bilinear map on uh, elliptic curves, but it's needed for the verification. Um, and you can do uh, multiplication of elliptic curve points. Yeah, so that's basically the precompiles uh, Christian wrote that are needed to do the verification. So from next week on, the the verification of CK snarks will be possible in the mainnet, and it's, it's only elliptic curve operations. We need. Yes. Uh, the common reference string or trusted setup you use is from is the same in, as in Zcash. Well, in in the actual Zcash setup phase, they had six people sitting in, in a room for like a day or something and copying DVDs and and passing them around. So no, that's not what we're using. Um, at the moment, we're actually using for this prototype a trusted setup phase. That's why I also say don't use it in production because you can only trust your own proofs basically or proofs by people you trust anyway so there's not much uh, point in that but there is efforts of creating uh, distributed setup phases um, that are more efficient scalable than the original distributed protocol that the Zcash uh, guys used during their setup phase so Stefan's currently looking at options of bringing that to Ethereum. So you could do actually do the setup um, off-chain but synchronized via smart contracts. So that there could be a setup of a number of people who then can be sure that if they themselves were honest, then the proofs can never be faked or anything. So that's ongoing research, I think. And also the Zcash guys reached out and said they have a new protocol, it's not published yet, so we'll have to see where that goes. I hope there will be more efficient distributed set setups in the future, and then that tool would greatly benefit. Perhaps one additional word on, on the trusted setup. So, uh, the idea is that you do that with multiple people, and uh, there is some secret data being generated during this process, and as long as one single person in this group deletes, so it's their own secret data that was generated, so everyone generates secret data independent of each other. Uh, as long as one single person deletes that data, then the process worked. And so they were actually, with the, the Zcash trusted set, they were actually not sitting in the same room. Um, they were distributed all around the globe, or at least they tried to be in different location. And there's an interesting article by Peter Todd who participated in the setup, and he was actually driving around uh, the west coast of the United States never staying at the same place for, uh, for more than an hour and uh, recording everything so that nobody can, uh, can bug his devices. And yeah, that, that's quite interesting. There's a video too. Huh? There's a video of them like doing, doing some of that stuff uh -huh. and also destroying the hard drives like after. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, right, the DVD thing was just so you could do the computation and the networking on two different uh, computers. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah.
I don't know what recursive CK snarks are. I'm not aware, are you aware? I'm not 100% sure, but I would say that a recursive CK snark is a CK snark that verifies another CK snark. I mean, a CK snark is, is, is just the computation itself, right? So you can use CK snarks to verify CK snarks. And because the, the time needed, the complexity needed to do the verification does not depend on the actual computation, you can do this bootstrapping process and then uh, yeah, verify arbitrarily complex data by doing that recursively. Would it help to achieve better security? I mean, with generating the data and stuff. Sorry, yeah. you, you were talking about the data which <coughs> should be destroyed afterwards. No, no, just the computation you performed. Sorry. Ah. I, I was, I, I didn't mean to say data, it was actually computation of forms. Yeah, so at the moment the setup phase is just local, and then we actually, it's, I didn't implement that myself, we use library for that, so we hope that the library forgets or destroys the data, or we can look at the source code that actually seems to do it, but um, if you have compromised device, there's still a risk, so a distributed setup phase um, is definitely needed also so that I can convince others that the setup process has been performed correctly and they can trust the proofs I generate. Uh, this tool? Uh, no, not yet, because the CLI, I haven't implemented all operations completely, but I plan to have have a published version at DEF CON, so it's like half a month. Half a month, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So ideally the tool works perfectly then and has a hash function implemented, but no promises. Okay, no more questions, then I'll pass on to questions. <laughs>